Hello and welcome to a wonderful edition of uh, the New Indian Express's uh, Expressions. We have uh, the inimitable Professor S. P. Roy with us. He's, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Ota describes him, he's the grand old man of, uh, let's mm -hmm. cut out the old, well, let's just say the grand man of uh, uh, tribal development mm -hmm. and tribal studies in India. And we have uh, uh, Dr. Ota, who's uh, the director of the Tribal Research Institute. And we're doing this on International Forest Day, so that's very significant. Uh, because we thought we'll focus on uh, tribals and their relationship to the forest. And there's been so much conversation around that, uh, on how uh, the tribals relate to uh, their forests and what they think of it. But uh, there's not enough, uh, there are not enough people, I think, who actually intimately lived with them, talk to them and understand the diversity of the tribals and the diversity of the biodiversity. But uh, both Professor Roy and <coughs> Dakota, people who really spent their lives with them. Uh, and uh, I'd like to begin with uh, Professor Roy and then go on to Dr. Ota. Professor Roy, uh, at this moment, when we talk about tribals and forest development, what is the first thing that uh, strikes you? You know, we think of the depletion of the forest cover uh, as being the first thing. But as Dr. Ota was telling me, uh, there has been an increase in the last uh, three years. So uh, we really don't know much about what's happening. Uh, could you enlighten us? Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Kaveri ma'am. Uh, this is on the day of uh, World Forestry Day. Yeah. As a, internationally. It is recognized a very important day um, for the forest and sustainable development. Right. Uh, and, and we are taking tribe as one component. Right. When we talk of sustainable development, it is not for tribal alone. But today we are talking while thinking about the sustainable development, the role of the forest, how important is tribal contribution, tribal culture, and tribal development. So broadly, uh, sustainable development and contribution of tribal in forest conservation for sustainable development and for tribal development also. This is for tribal development also. Right. Yeah. So here we see globally, we are passing through some common problem which ever human history has witnessed. And that is climate change. It's a global problem, not for India, or Pakistan, or Burma, or, mm -hmm. or Russia, or America. All of us have one problem, climate change, which has shaken the humanity. Now, when you go further understanding the climate change, which is one of the important issues of such development, because unless we address climate change, we can't think of development. Right. So what are the cause for that? Unless we understand the cause, we can't address the issue. So. Uh, it is now universally accepted four or five important causes. One of the important causes is that uh, uh, accumulation of carbon dioxide gas and other gases, uh, uh, which uh, picks in the human environment, uh, and causes warm. In addition to carbon uh, dioxide, the gas like uh, uh, from the nitrogen use of uh, chemical nitrous oxide, sun methane, is a fuel. So all these gases, if these are not addressed to, we are not going to address the issue of sustainable development, climate change. Now, where from we can think of a, a carbon dioxide, think removal of carbon, and we call it carbon sequestration. That means how the earth system, plant, sea, soil, will absorb carbon and keep up the soil. That is carbon sequestration. Here, interestingly, the forest is the larger system which absorbs carbon for carbon sequestration. And then of the forest, the natural forest, which is more important for carbon sequestration. And another interesting thing, when we think that for carbon sequestration, natural forest is important. And natural forest, the territory 
is mostly inhabited directly or indirectly by indigenous tribal people. Another interesting, that means if you want to address the carbon situation, if you want to address the sustainable development, if you want to address the humanity as a whole, not tribal alone, humanity as a whole, so we have to think of the indigenous forest and indigenous community. This is the major point of our understanding. Uh, maybe any scientist, but any kind of research, any noble laureate cannot ignore about the importance of biodiversity and indigenous people. So this is why we have uh, thought of uh, discussing what are the major factors which will be helping us for addressing the issue of climate change, sustainable development through indigenous tribe and the indigenous forest. This is the globally. I will take two uh, examples. Right. Globally, uh, hardly there are 2% uh, of the population of indigenous community. And more than 60% of the biodiversity is directly used or managed by the, these indigenous people. So you can understand how important are indigenous people mm -hmm. who are indirectly, indirectly managing or using the world's richest biodiversity which is responsible for carbon sequestration, which is responsible for sustainable development for all of us. And in India also, I'm talking the globe, in India also, if you go through the data, even from the Indian Express, uh, for Indian uh, Forest Survey, it is found that uh, while there has been greening increase in the forest, I repeat, there has been greening increase of the forest cover, but the carbon sequestration has not been by all the forests. Very interestingly, the carbon sequestration, which is responsible for carbon sink, which is responsible for climate change, which is responsible for sustainable development, is confined to, we call it, as per the government report, tribal district of indigenous forest. Mm. Not all forests, tribal district of indigenous forests. Say, uh, you have seen the report, it is published in the newspaper. Karnataka has more greening due to plantation, maybe 1,000 uh, square kilometer. Andhra Pradesh is nearly nine, more than 900. But the carbon sequestration has been less there. Why is, that, why is that, Professor? Yeah, why that? See, uh, carbon sequestration is a process of biological activity. Right. Now the biological activity will be functioning only when certain parts work together. Okay. Uh, not uh, just one part. I'll give you an right. example. If your heart has to work. Right. So the cell of the heart are different from the cell of your lungs or intestine. Right. Or, or your skin or muscle. So the carbon sequestration system is the interdependent certain biodiversity, right. not a single plant alone. Right. So when we do plantation, we have plantation of one or two species. But the functioning of the heart depends on the number of interdependent species right. which form the forest ecosystem. Right. So in order to conserve that natural forest ecosystem, which is remotely still surviving with indigenous people, where we have not removed those rare species, those threatened species, those keynote species. So all these species interact together to function as a forest ecosystem. Right. So not a single tree, you may have thousands of miles of plantation, but that is not the ecosystem. Ecosystem right. has some plants and trees which form the interdependent part. Right. And, and the indigenous people, they understand which part they have to remove, which is not, because they consider themselves as a part of the system. But they why, why have, yeah, sorry, they sorry. They do not professor. consider themselves as a manager, whereas forester, will consider not a part of the forest ecosystem, 
he will consider as a manager. See, so you can understand the difference between the approach and the knowledge. If you are becoming a part of your heart, yeah. you work it differently. And the surgeon who will be operating your heart will be looking heart from differently. So the indigenous people are, they consider themselves the part of their ecosystem, their knowledge, their belief. They connect their ancestors with the trees and wildlife, the totem relationship, the origin. That is why they consider the forest ecosystem as a cosmological relationship, a, not a kind of mechanical relationship. Their spirit, their culture is interconnected with a tree and species. So the whole approach of understanding ecosystem is different of the indigenous community than a forest manager. Why have we not been able to transfer the uh, tribal model of uh, uh, the relationship with nature and biodiversity yeah. to uh, non-tribal communities? Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, I'm very happy to share that. The government of India, the Ministry of uh, Tribal Affairs, uh, with the approaches of the Forest Right Act, has been trying to understand. First, we have to understand the tribal culture, which helps in conservation. Exactly. So then we can replicate. Thing. Yeah, yeah. They, they only can replicate. You are right. Yeah, right. So the, this approach of the ministry to understand uh, through the forest resource conservation. One is the forest can be used by tree, hmm. but what is the natural forest resource as a whole system that comes under FRA hmm. by the government of India through Ministry of Tribal Affairs. And this has been linked with the Biological Diversity Act 2002, right. where it is mentioned under section 41 that the knowledge of the community uh, this is as a part of the patent. It should be recognized and it should be registered. And it, it has to be seen as a part of the whole forest ecosystem. It's not only the forest alone. Right. It's for all biodiversity. That is why the initiation by the government of India through Biological Diversity Act to prepare PBR, People's Biodiversity Register. This PBR is one of the instruments through which indigenous knowledge will be recorded. The rare species, the other species will be recorded over there so that while conservation continue, they can also have economy and livelihood. Right. So these are the two important acts of the government of India. One is Biological Diversity Act 2002. One is FRA 2006. So these are uh, the approaches and means. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, we'll discuss uh, the challenges in uh, implementation of uh, these two. But this is a good beginning. We must appreciate this is a good beginning uh, from the uh, government of India. Right. And, uh, and this is why this is uh, recognized uh, by United Nations also in their Article 33. You ask about the, uh, India, uh, why the modern is not replicated. Even the United Nations, Article 33, they have referred the indigenous knowledge which favors conservation should be replicated and should be encouraged. That is uh, the Article 33. Uh, and uh, there's another act uh, under CBD, mm -hmm. Convention of Biological Diversity. There, uh, Article 8J, it is mentioned very categorically that indigenous people should be made partner in the conservation planning and their benefits should be taken care on the priority. And it, very interestingly, I also like it, I also repeat it, we should not consider tribal as beneficiary. I told you earlier also. Right. Uh, we are beneficiary if they conserve. So the whole of our approach that as if we are doing some mercy or providing dole to the tribal, right. uh, we should not. Uh, we have to make them as a partner 
use their indigenous knowledge for their own survival and the survival of the humanity as a whole. Right. Dr. Ota, may I bring you in here? Because uh, as director of the Tribal Research Institute in uh, Odessa, you're one of the, it's one of the 27 uh, TRIs in the country. And uh, this is the work that TRIs are doing. And you were telling me uh, recently of uh, uh, how uh, TRI Odessa has actually helped in locating uh, 600 springs uh, all over uh, Odisha, which is fascinating. And the yeah. government uh, uh, had promised that it would locate uh, a thousand sp uh, springs nationwide. 600 have already been located in Odisha, thanks to uh, tapping the indigenous knowledge of uh, tribals. Can we talk a little about these wonderful best practices that need to be now be showcased and in a way brought into the national uh, discourse? Uh, certainly. You know, th thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, taking you know, a cue from what Professor uh, Roy said, I'm just you know, going ahead. Well, my research institute is the oldest of all the tribal research institutes of the country. Okay. It when was, was it up set up? It was set up in 1952. Oh, uh, yeah. the first way, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I must tell you what uh, our TRI is doing mm. and what many other TRIs are doing differently. Mm. You see, uh, just two best practices, I should say. Why even a couple of more practices, I will also say. Uh, to see that uh, the Forest uh, Right Act and Forest Diversity the forest is protected, what all steps we have taken. One thing I'll tell you, forest cannot be seen in isolation. Right. A plantation of trees cannot be seen in isolation or a tree which you know, provides oxygen to you is also, will also not be taken in isolation. Right. What we have been doing, let me tell you, um, first of all, you see when in 2006, the Forest Right Act got promulgated. And in 2007, December, uh, the rules also, you know, were um, uh, announced by government of India. You know, it's a central act. What we did, we tried to, there's a very, very, you know, new act. It promises a lot of things, but you have to convince the tribals. You have to win their heart. You have to make them understand. Otherwise, they're very culture bound. They won't listen to you. So what we did, you know, in TRI Odessa, we translated the uh, important, you know, part, the operational part of the act and its objective in 21 tribal languages. Oh. We hold a number of, you know, um, what should I say, capacity building training program on site in the among the communities. We also built, you know, the frontline community workers who can take it forward. You see, when a new act came, there was also, all the officers who are to implement it also were not in the single right. page, same page. We even brought all kinds of stakeholders and we provided them training program. We prepared, you know, in uh, collaboration with UNDP, uh, an interactive, you know, um, uh, you know CD, which was extremely helpful in understanding how to take it forward, how to apply for the claims, how to scrutinize it, and how to get it approved, not only with the, you know, keeping at the back of the mind that you have to reject the cases. Mm. So that, you know, paved the way. And you see, Odisha is, that is why the leader in the entire country, in terms of, you know, giving more than, 4.75 lakhs of individual forest titles so far. Right. Next important thing is that only forest right is not going to help you. Only plantation is not going to help you. They have to exist. You are giving a piece of land in the name of the uh, tribal which they have been dealing for ages. But you know, it has to be made productive. For productive, you need water sources. What we found in Tribal Research Institute that there are so many uh, perennial streams right. or springs, you can say, which has a great potential. If that can be tapped, probably irrigation can be made available by the tribal themselves. It can serve 
their agriculture purpose. It can give them more productivity in their land. They forest land which is given in the name of tribals under the FRA can be meaningfully used to source their livelihood. Apart from that, it can also provide them water for drinking, which is very scarce in you know, hilltops. Mm. So the mission which was started by Minister of Tribal Affairs for 1000 Spring Initiative has now touched about 300, you see, by ministry at various places. But what we did in TRI, we have identified the report of which will be available by end of April. 620 or 25, I don't remember correctly, we have identified strip, you know, springs. Once we give that you know, to the government of Odessa, I think in phases, those you know, springs can be tapped and it can be channelized for irrigation purpose. Okay. Second important thing you must remember, a lot of forest fire takes place. You see, you plant, and you see, on the other hand, forest fire. So we submitted a project to the Ministry of Tribal Affairs, and we have taken two states, one Madhya Pradesh and the other Odisha, five, five, ten districts. Here, five districts, and in Madhya Pradesh, five districts. And in collaboration with IIFM Bhopal, we are undertaking a study to know the dynamics so why forest fire is happening? Because unless you take care of the forest fire, you understand why it is happening. Is there a cultural <laughs> reason? Is there a reason, you know, which is caused for some other thing? So one has to find out. And ministry has given us the you know, mandate that will come up on the basis of the finding, a framework which will be used and shared by the ministry to all other states so that this forest fire can be combated. These are some of the things, you see, just to give you an indication, which TRI Odisha is doing, which will probably help a lot in addressing this issue. Right. Professor Roy, this is just one institute. I mean, there are, as we said, 26 others, and there's the work that institutions like you are doing. So uh, really what, uh, uh, you know, as you said, there's, there needs to be a, a national framework. There needs to be a national repository of all this wisdom so that we can all share from each other. Uh, you know, how does one do that? Two approaches, which has been universally asked for. The first is, instead of uh, planning for individual some plants as a quick buck, making it in the name of greening. One has to understand the ecosystem as a whole, landscape. Hmm. Uh, and this decade, tenure, is considered as a decade of uh, ecosystem restoration by United Nations. India is also one of the signatory. So the approach will be identify the landscape as a whole, where the nature and the culture of the community, it should be compatible. I repeat, nature. When we say nature, the land, biodiversity, water, livestock, the wildlife, all these natural ecosystem with the culture of the community, that means how community sees, perceive natural phenomenon right. as an entity of coexistence. And this has been designed by Ibrad and uh, has been now uh, sponsored uh, by the Ministry of Tribal Affairs to identify the ecosystem in Chhattisgarh and also in Odisha, and with a broad approach, we have taken three more states uh, like uh, West Bengal, uh, Jharkhand, and now we'll be taking for the Northeast also Tripura and Assam. 
So the approach is ecosystem, not individual. Mm. Number two, for making the compatibility of the culture. See, culture is a continuous process. It is never static. Mm. It keeps on changing. So while culture keep on changing, one can facilitate those cultural behavior which favors conservation. Right. And <laughs> it, is a, it, it is not possible just by framing act and rule. We have to change the cultural ethos of the organization of the community. Here, community, when I say not alone, tribal, because the tribal will be interacting with the non tribal in the same landscape. Hmm. So this will help tribal if we build capacity while they are conserving the natural resources, forest and livelihood, we recognize their culture and practices and also work together with the non-tribal who will respect tribal culture hmm. and work together. So this will be one of the approach of mainstreaming of the tribal. And respecting their culture, I, re I, I repeat here, very streaming is while you identify the uniqueness of their culture, make use of it, respect it, so that the tribal do not consider as a, a, as a kind of inferior to anyone. Right. right. So that is the main streaming. And the third part of this, that uh, do not plan for a single activity like agriculture or fishery. There are nine activities which has been designed by Idrar, and all those nine activities are interdependent. And we call it no ratan because each ratan is important for the community. Uh, uh, just uh, I tell the first ratan for the tribe or anyone that near their household land, homestead. We have to start organic uh, uh, vegetable, organic kitchen garden. Right. So the, immediately, the, there'll be reduction on the pressure for going to forest because if you find something immediately a, around their uh, hut, so this is one, and then drip irrigation, which is the minimum use of water because most of this tribal area, they suffer from the water scarcity because of mm -hmm. depletion, drying up. So, and it's not very expensive. So drip irrigation, the drop and drop, it enriches. And then come for any agri crop, agriculture. Here in agriculture, it, what we have it done, and the ministry has also appreciated, even the ICR, Indian Cost Agriculture, they have appreciated to use the indigenous seed like millet, maize, pulses, those pulses, which has got a value of nitrogen fixation. Hmm. The soil improves. Right. Yeah. And then go for organic, vermicompost, I think. With the water conservation comes the fishery. And then agroforestry. Agroforestry, uh, where some of the plant combination works better. Which plant will go with that? So agroforestry will help our economic, soil conservation, and also, very interestingly, the topic which I was saying about the carbon sequestration, there, there, there are certain combination of plant which go better with that. And then comes for fodder for livestock. Mm. Because when we talk of the livestock, and if you do not plant for the fodder, it, it, it cannot be there. So the, all these nine has to be in place. What happens, uh, Dr. Ota will appreciate, he will tell, what happens each sector, say agriculture department, they will beat their own drum of agri-crop. Fishery will come someday and talk of the fishery. Water people will come someday talk. Forest will talk. So each one will play their instrument differently. So mm. there is no orchestra. So the harmony is not there. So what is now planned for convergence of all these resources, work together, identify the landscape, what is appropriate 
for cultivation and this is conservation with the convergence of all the sectoral resources and harmonizing right. through micro planning through people's participation right. and this is very very important dr kota will appreciate about the uh, convergence of resources for sustainable tribal development which will have a uh, good for the livelihood biodiversity and the health of the forest also and health of the community also right dr otto you want to take it from there yeah you see uh, 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 professor rai uh, told something let me just tell you in fact uh, tri odisha and ibrad we are doing together a good work hmm. he spoke about convergence you know right from first plan period if you see till 12th plan period and beyond even during niti ayog's regime there have been different kinds of tribal development strategies hmm. fund has been flowing there is no dearth of fund you know for tribal development hmm. but if you see while tribal development has happened some you know human development key human development indicators have considerably improved Yet, yet, the pace of tribal development has been very slow. Mm. So, what we and Ibrad together gave a proposal to the ministry that somewhere something is going wrong, and probably there is a need for convergence. Often, same work is being done by X department, and the same department is done by the Y department. the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing often i'm not saying you know this is a practice so we thought that we will try to find out how convergence can be taken as an approach hmm. with a you know defined modality so that the fund can be spent yet the benefits can accrue to the tribals more sustainably so that is what we are aiming at having said that i will tell you one thing this conservation cum development ccd approach they say this was for the first time because you know every 5 years government of india planning commission will think that let us take stock of tribal development and will say that tribal development has not happened at the pace at which it was to happen so they will come up with a different kind of strategy in 2009 a different approach was propagated what is that approach conservation cum development so this conservation cum development became the approach uh, you know of uh, government it has paid off it basically tried to see how development can happen without infringing upon the culture of tribal too much and also trying to learn from the tribal culture and try to see if that can fit in or integrated with other kinds of development you know approaches that we have in this regard i will tell you one you know instance uh you know unesco has been identifying intangible cultural heritages yeah, of course okay okay the other day we met you know eric the uh, you know country head of uh, unesco and we were discussing there is one particular you know traditional heritage agricultural system which is called as thas mm -hmm. t h a s one of the best examples you find amongst two tribal communities of odisha one is the bonda you must have heard about bonda highlanders right and the other one is saura another you know tribal community who is also a pvt chief what they do you know they do very beautiful kind of stone bonding to you know see that the soil and water management is done in the best possible manner soil erosion doesn't take place it is arrested and the water also you know how very carefully it can be used so that it can spread over you know uh, more you know extent of land and it is a very very good practice unesco also have come have seen that and have taken cognizance of it so if such you know indigenous practices which has a replicability and which can also enhance the you know um, 
opportunity for sustainable livelihood should also be tried more and more and it can be expanded more and more in China. Yeah. One thing you asked, which probably, uh, you know, Professor uh, Rai, uh, because he has told so many things missed out. You said that so many good things are done, whether we are trying to put it in a repository. Yeah, a national, nationwide repository. Yes, I tell you, Minister of Tribal Affairs have done a national, you know, uh, tribal document repository, okay. where not only the documents, which 37, you know, Center of Excellences like the uh, Royce, you know, Institute, 20, you know, seven TRIs, and many other agencies are doing, they are, you know, keeping it in dedicated portal. Okay. That portal is not, not only, you know, uh, consists of reports, you know, it also consists of video clippings. Right. It also consists of photographs. And it also consists of process documentation so that one can easily follow how to adopt it. Right. Wonderful. Uh, Professor Roy and, Professor, and uh, Dr. Uta, just last thoughts on the centrality of forests uh, in uh, the tribal's, uh, tribal life and what we can do to continue to maintain that centrality in the given situation with the kind of development that we see taking place and to respect the, that centrality. Uh, one thing that uh, we all humans use our intelligence, knowledge. Right. This is universal for the tribal, non-tribal. Right. We all are also guided and condition our thought with our belief system. Hmm. And the belief system is more powerful in governing my mindset and right. controlling my action. The tribal belief system is more akin to their ancestral practices where they relate with the totem. Hmm. They relate with the spiritualism. And such kind of a notion has given the birth of a good product, I will call it product, sacred groove. The sacred groove of, in most tribal villages are some of the species which are conserved together and they believe some deity is there. Yeah. They worship it. Such kind of a sacred group, uh, almost all part of the country, but Meghala and other part have been studied by many biologists. We too have studied. In Meghala, nearly 125 uh, sacred groups and more than 500 species are conserved is a magnificent effort of the tribal mm. that conservation of such species is not only important just as a number of tree, but these sacred groups work as a pivot for ecosystem maintenance of the entire landscape. Right. So this is very, very important approach of the tribal. What we should think of Documentation has been done, but the replication of such sacred group uh, needs to be uh, done in a more scientific, social, and political also. Right. When I say political, means a political will to promote sacred group, respect sacred group. This has not been done uh, more in the form of the political will respecting, making an agenda of sacred group. Right. And I tell you, such kind of sacred group may not be in the form of the way tribal does, but in most all religion, even Hindus, worshiping of people. Yeah. Tulsi. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. So these kind of promotion will help in biodiversity, and such sacred groups have been playing a very powerful role in enriching the soil quality of the neighboring area. So if that soil quality improves, 
it will also improve the agriculture production it will also improve the number of birds and and insect which are important pollinators of the nature so this kind of approach is the one which we have been also trying and the second one as it happens ma'am each society is having a younger generation right and each younger generation may not like to follow what their ancestors have been doing right. it happens in the tribal also right and uh, they sometimes come at the crossroad because of their exposure because of their education because education has been promoted by the government we want school colleges right now when they go for school and colleges uh, we can't uh, uh, expect them they will remain in the village yeah. and go for sacred group or conservation they right. will look for some opportunity so for them for them some kind of a ecological economic career i i i, I am very fond of using this two term because unless ecology is sustainable tomorrow economy will be weakened hmm. so this has to be uh, linked together for them the strategy a kind of career or the ecological economy may be in the name of a uh, uh, farmers producer organization medicinal plant yeah. uh, which is which is coming up right and also for the livestock a career plan on that right so this will go and the last yeah. point yeah. for yeah. promotion women empowerment i right. have seen most of the tribal women are more uh, action oriented proactive right. come forward to take responsibility and deliver so although uh, there have been number of program for uh, women opportunity women education but from the conservation point of view was sustainability uh, they take the back seat although they are the main actor yeah so how we link with them uh, for the ecological economic I, i i use the term ecological economic so whenever you think of uh, any economy say school teacher so the teacher will understand whether the water is there or not or the biodiversity is there or not because the health and food what kind of food we are taking so even taking what kind of food is there and finally the indigenous seed mm. even for millet and kodo uh, this flax tc alsi and uh, uh, other crop which is coming in the tribal area this does not require lot of water for cultivation and it is pest resistant so it does not require also lot of pesticide so we should promote and now all the nutrition the expert are promoting this kind of food so we can have a seed bank seed bank for indigenous seed which will be helping in multiple way because if the tribal understand it has got a future so they will not go for rice and wheat growing uh, and they will not go for buying chemical fertilizer if they understand it the value so how to have a indigenous knowledge even the millet is being promoted export so the quality is also being sought so all these things should be not in isolation it right. should be a package for the landscape approach for tribal development and again i say it is not the tribal development is a development of the ecosystem development right. of the society as a whole development of you ma'am kaveri and sp roy and ota development for our survival we have to care for the tribal development right thank you wonderful a uh, last thoughts uh, uh, dr ota uh, yeah uh, kaveri ma'am uh, i i will only tell you that there are acts and policies but unless and otherwise you know professor ray spoke about the youths and also the old generation the gap and all that the forest it is a fact that there is a symbiotic relationship between forest and the tribes right correct 
But then, you know, the forest cannot survive sustainably without the help of the tribals, right. without policing that, without nurturing it, and without properly, you know, harnessing it. One thing I'll tell you, unless and otherwise, the forest becomes a very sustainable source of livelihood and lucrative source of livelihood for mm. the youths. Mm. The tribals, the young tribals are not going to, you know, stick to the forest. Right. They will look for various avenues which they should look for. But, you know, to make it sustainable, I think we must try to make the forest a very good source of earning, mm. yet without, you know, losing the density of the forest and the coverage of the forest. Mm. Look at the Forest Rights Act. Mm. It, promises, it promises everything, what Professor Raya said and what I'm going to tell you. Right. We have individual forest rights. It doesn't say that, you know, you un undo the uh, century-long injustice and only give them, they settle the land in their favor. No, you must have to ensure that, you know, it becomes productive. Most important part, which is not done so far, or which is very seldom implemented in terms of Forest Right Act, is the community forest rights. Community forest right is very slow starter. Once community forest right is you know, done and it is properly managed mm. with a clearly defined mechanism, it can give a lot of source of earning. And last, which is a non-starter, so far as the Forest Right Act is concerned, is the habitat right of the, for the PBTGs. It is a non-starter in the entire country. Odisha is the only state which has identified, filed in all cases, you know, the habitat right. And probably we are going to give the habitat right in about six months time to the PBTGs. Right. Last important thing, only, you know, Forest productivity, forest, minor forest producers is not going to give, you know, livelihood support to the tribals and also, you know, a win-win situation for the forest and tribals. We have to have, you know, proper system in place for the minimum support price for the minor forest produce. Though it is a scheme, it is not a very successful, successful scheme. There are about 102 minor forest producers types. Only for 20 or 25, you know, the minimum support price is provided. That too, it is not being handled, you know, the way it should have. And in tribal areas, MFPs are perishable. There are many, many kind of, you know, MFPs which are perishable. Right. We, don't, we don't have, you know, a store yard. We don't have, you know, processing unit in tribal areas we don't have cold storage to keep. I think all these things are also need to be supported to encourage the tribals and to see that they get, you know, decent earning from that so that they will take care of the forest, forest survives and the tribal survives. And we survive. <laughs> and we survive. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Roy. Thank you very much, Dr. Uta. It was really a wonderful uh, discussion. And on a very important day, uh, the World Forest Day, thank you very much. And all the best to all the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.